Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Mrs. Freeman, and I'm the school counselor for kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. If you're a third, fourth, and fifth grader, you haven't seen me in a while, so I just wanted to take a minute and remind you who I am. Um, I'm here to work with all of you guys in the online school, and I work very closely with Mrs. Gray. Good morning. Hi, I am the school counselor for grades three, four, and five. I am Mrs. Gray, and I work closely with those grade levels. So um, I'm excited to be with Ms. Freeman this morning and we're going to do our lesson together for K through 5. So I hope you enjoy. Today guys we're going to talk all about changes and transitions and how things can change over time. So as you can see in front of you there's a picture of a tree in all the different seasons. Right now we're in the middle of winter and it's cold and kind of blustery outside most days, but soon you're gonna start to see some flowers blooming and little buds on the trees. Some of my very favorite things to notice in the spring. And just like every other year, the winter will fade and the weather will get warm again and the seasons continue to change. The seasons are really changing all day, every day, right around us, but a lot of times we don't notice it. And it's one thing that I think it's important for us to remember that changes are happening every moment of every day. And even if we're not noticing them, they're going on all around us. I bet that you have changed a lot in the past few years. So these are some pictures of my little girl, Ivy, and man, has she changed a lot. So she will be two in February, which means that two years ago, she was a brand new baby. She couldn't talk, she couldn't walk, she couldn't basically do anything at all except for cry and eat. And now she's two years old, she's talking and walking and riding a bike and doing all sorts of things. And you know what? I bet you have changed a ton too. Think about what you were like two years ago. Were you a lot smaller? Were you into different kinds of things? Did you like different kinds of games and different kinds of things to do for fun? Were you into different kinds of foods and different kinds of music? I bet you were. Miss Gray, can you think of some things that have changed about you in the past two years? Oh my goodness. So in the past two years, for me, I have two boys, um, they're twins and they're age 15. and they've changed a lot um, in their teenage years. Um, they've gotten taller and their voices have changed and just um, a lot of things going on. And as for me, I live in a different house than I did two years ago. That was a big change for me. I've lived in my other house for over 20 years. Wow. So um, that was a big change. I moved this past summer. Uh, another change is just, um, working for the online school. That's been a big change for Ms. Freeman and for myself. This is my 23rd year as a school counselor and I have been in the school building for 22 years. So having to come and um, do the online school, it's been great, but it's also been challenging for me trying to learn how to do these videos for you guys. So there have been a lot of changes in the past couple of years for even, you know, for adults, just like for kids. Absolutely. Funny that you say that, Miss Gray. I actually moved to a new house in the past two years, too. Um, I moved over the summer right before we started school up this year. And I remember when I first got here and my house was full of boxes and we just walked in the door for the first day, it didn't really feel like home to me right at the very beginning. It felt like a new place and it was kind of, it made me like a little bit nervous even, like I felt a little bit out of sorts. Did you feel that way when you moved to your new house? I did. Um, our house was a lot bigger than our other house and it was like, what do I do? How, you, know, I, you know, I didn't know how to decorate at first. And one of the biggest things that I noticed is my dog. Um, oh, yeah. My dog had a really hard time transitioning to the new home. Um, Dutch is um, my dog's name, doesn't like change. And she actually got sick a lot when we first moved. She was extremely anxious and nervous. But after being here for a couple of weeks, she was getting the hang of it. And now she knows the house like, um, you know, like she did the other house. But it took her a long time 
um, for a dog to be able to understand the new routine. Um, so sometimes just moving to a new house can, can cause anxiousness and nervousness in someone until you get used to it. Absolutely. I felt like a very small little person in a big house when I moved to my new house too. Everything felt out of sorts and out of place, but now it's just home and I've gotten used to it and I love it here. Have any of you guys ever moved boys and girls? Do you remember feeling a little bit nervous on that very first day? And then I bet after time, it started to just feel like home to you too. Sometimes changes are awesome. Moving to a new house we talked about can be a little nerve wracking and make you feel a little anxious, but sometimes there are things that change about you that just make you feel great. And to me, that mostly happens when I learn to do something new. Every time you learn something new, that's a change. And it's something about you that you didn't have or know before, and now you do. And it just makes me feel so good, whether it's a skill in math class or something like riding a bike, Anytime I learn something new, it makes me feel really good. What about you, Miss Gray? I agree. And sometimes it takes practice and you, and it does take patience um, when you learn something new, because sometimes we don't get it just like that. And that's kind of that growth mindset that I know Miss Freeman and I both have um, had a lesson on um, with you guys is having that growth mindset and not giving up. And I think just even in school, um, you think about where you are now and where you were before. Um, you know, you had to learn the alphabet before you could read. You had to learn um, your numbers before you could start doing math. And, you know, even playing video games. Uh, I know a lot of you like video games. You had to start off on, you know, the bottom level before you could get, you know, higher on your levels for different games. So no matter what you do, it takes practice and patience. Absolutely, it does take a lot of patience. And you know what, sometimes we make mistakes and fall down, we have to get back up. I bet a lot of you at some point in your life couldn't ride a bike at all, didn't have the slightest idea how to even put your feet on the pedals. And then you get a bike maybe with training wheels and you practice and you practice and you practice. Does anybody remember the first time you took your training wheels off and rode your bike successfully? That feeling still sticks with me, even though it was a long time ago for Mrs. Freeman now. I remember how awesome it felt to ride a bike for the first time. And I know a lot of you guys are feeling maybe a little nervous about the big change that we're gonna be going through at the semester swap when there are gonna be some new kids coming into your classes or you might get a new teacher or some of you might be going back face to face. But it's kind of like riding a bike. You may feel nervous at first, but it's gonna feel awesome once you get used to being with your new classmates. And just like every new school year is a new beginning, this is kind of a new beginning too. So, oops. Things are changing all the time. Just like I said earlier, the seasons are changing all the time around us. Um, you are growing every single day. You probably won't get up tomorrow and look at yourself in the mirror and think, man, I am way taller than yesterday. But I promise you, you are growing every single day and you're learning new things all the time. Stop for a minute and think to yourself just about a few new things that you've learned this year since we started school in September. Mrs. Gray, can you think of anything new that you've learned since September? Oh my goodness. So I've actually learned a lot of new things since September. Um, like I said, you know, Ms. Freeman and I coming into the online school, I wasn't very tech savvy, meaning I don't know a lot about, you know, computers and doing all these fancy things on the computers. So I was really nervous uh, learning how to make these videos for you guys and letting you, um, do, you know, have fun with those videos and be able to communicate with y'all. Um, you know, it was a lot to learn for me. And so just learning how to do these videos to have every Monday for you guys to look at and learn from, that was, that was a new skill that I had to learn. And um, now I've, I've been able to be able to do a lot of different things for you guys and I'm still learning. <laughs> so um, that's been a big change for me. 
completely agree with you. Did you know that I had never seen Schoology before this past summer? I had never been on a Schoology page. I didn't even have a Schoology page of my own before this summer. And now I use Schoology every single week to message with you guys and to send you lessons every week. And I love it. It's such a cool way for me to be able to connect with you guys. But I had to learn a lot about how to use Schoology and how to be able to add new things to my Schoology page and share things with you guys at home. And I bet you guys have all learned a ton about Schoology too and about learning online, using Seesaw and using all the different tools that you've learned about this year. It has been so cool to see how we can share information together online. But sometimes it feels a little intimidating. Let's be real. Sometimes technology can feel a little challenging and sometimes it does feel a little intimidating. Sometimes when I come into a classroom for morning meeting, I feel like I haven't seen you guys in a long time and I feel a little bit nervous. And sometimes something like Zoom freezes or something won't work on my computer or even like earlier in this presentation, I skipped too many slides forward and had to go back and I feel a little bit silly and that's okay. It's okay for changes to make you a little bit nervous. Mrs. Gray, have you thought of any changes or anything that's happened to you changed over time that has made you feel a little bit nervous? Well, just some of the changes that we've already talked about, you know, coming into the online school to be a school counselor for you guys was intimidating to me because I'd never done it before. Um, moving to a new house was a little intimidating because I'm like, oh, I have all this space. What am I going to do with it? Um, you know, having having children was was um, intimidating because I wanted to be a good mom for my kids. Um, just I think any change um, that you go through, you get a little nervous, and you know, actually, that's okay to feel that way. That's part of change. But being able to learn how to positively deal with that. Um, it's something that we want to talk about with you guys um, because that change is always happening. Uh, like Ms. Freeman said, with the seasons, um, you know, you, it, it's just constant change. And so how do we deal with that? So even adults go through changes, we all go through changes, but we can't give up. We just got to keep moving on. Absolutely. You guys might be seeing some new kids in your classes, just like we talked about earlier. You might be in a new class with a new teacher and you might be going back to school face to face when you've been with us in the online school up until the semester swap. So those changes might feel a little intimidating. You might feel nervous if there's new kids in your class or if you're in a new class. I know sometimes I can get a little bit shy and feel a little bit nervous when I need to meet new people. But one thing I try to remind myself is that, you know what, they're probably feeling a little bit shy too. So on the next slide, we're gonna talk a little bit about some ways that you can help yourself feel a little bit more calm when changes are happening. So the best thing you can do is just try to make it fun. Lots of things are changing around us all the time. And here are a few ideas to help yourself feel calm and relaxed as changes are happening so that you can make sure that you get to enjoy it. Because you know what? A lot of things that change around us are really good for us in the long run, like learning new things. And even though I sometimes get frustrated when I'm trying to learn new things, once I've practiced and practiced and practiced and learned something new, I often feel really good about it and I bet you will too. So, taking deep breaths, we have talked a lot about this year. Um, it's really important to just take a moment for yourself when you're feeling overwhelmed and just take a deep breath getting lots of rest. I want you guys to try to remember to get lots of rest if you're feeling overwhelmed. So if you're nervous or feeling a little upset about any sort of change that's happening around you, just try to remember to give yourself a little bit of extra rest and a little bit of extra care to help your brain and your body and your heart get ready for the changes that are coming. Sometimes you need to just get up and get a drink of water. It's a very short, simple act, but sometimes it will help you kind of reset and refresh and get ready to go. 
I love a wall push-up. Wall push-ups are something that I can do when I feel myself getting frustrated with change. Like, especially when I'm trying to figure out something that's really challenging, I'll do some wall push-ups and that helps my brain feel calm again and try to figure out a new way to look at a situation if I need to figure something out that I can't. I bet a lot of you have some fidgets on your desk. One thing I really like to fidget with, this might be kind of hard to see, but it's a little hair clip and you kind of pinch it open. Well, it's one thing that I really like to fidget with because it's small, it doesn't make any noise, but it's something I can do with my hands if I'm feeling nervous. So I bet you have something like that on your desk that you can fidget with too. And if you don't, look around the house and see what you might have. Something like a hair clip or silly putty or Play-Doh or a small toy, as long as it doesn't make any sounds, can be a great fidget. Listening to music really helps. One thing that I love about the part of the day that we're not on Zoom is that you can listen to whatever music you want to. Sometimes you in the classroom would have music on while you were learning if your teachers put music on, but you don't get to choose. At home, you can choose whatever music you like to listen to and listen to it while you're working if it helps you study and focus. Counting to 10 is always a really good idea. Um, just taking a minute and giving yourself some time. Counting to 10 can get your mind off of whatever you're worried about and help you kind of refresh. Jumping jacks are awesome. Even just jumping up and down or dancing around or going for a little walk are all things that you can do to clear your mind and refresh your brain. So now that we've talked about a little bit of tips for helping make change fun and for helping you get through the moment if you're feeling overwhelmed, Mrs. Gray is gonna tell us a little bit about the other things you're gonna see in our lesson this week. Okay, so those are awesome tips. Um, and I think that, you know, just trying one or two, um, see if they work for you. Sometimes they may work one day and not another day, but don't give up on them. So, and what works for one person may not work for another. So it's good to have lots of tips in your hat to, the, to choose from, from day to day. But also on our Google slide that we have for you guys, we have this video, but we also have another video and a book. And I hope that you will take time to listen to that book. It's not long. It's called Don't Be Afraid to Drop. And it's by Julia Cook. And I use a lot of Julia Cook books in, in my lessons. Um, but it, it's talking about that growth mindset and stepping out of your comfort zone and trying something new. So uh, like Ms. Freeman said, we have a lot of things coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, you might have a new teacher, you might have some new kids in your class, a lot of changes. So this book, Don't Be Afraid to Drop, is about a, a raindrop that's afraid to fall from the sky. And because um, that's their job. Their job is to fall from the sky and water the plants, water the flowers, um, you know, just bring some uh, water to the earth. And this one specific drop was scared to do that. He liked being up in the sky, playing with his friends. It was safe for him. He knew what to expect up there. But his parents just kept urging him, saying, no, you, you've got to do this. And he was so nervous that he finally did it. And he realized that he was OK um, and that he was doing something for the earth while watering whatever it was that he landed on. And he could still go back to where he was and be with his friends and ride on the clouds and do all those different fun things that he likes to do. But also, you know, once he was able to drop, it was easier for him to do it time after time. But please take time to read that or listen to that book. Um, and hopefully you'll get something from it and learn to step outside your, your safety zone, your, your, that box for just a little bit. And some other tips that um, I weren't on that sheet that I just kind of wanted to briefly mention is that I know that some of you may be losing um, your teacher who you love, but I know that you can still keep in touch with that teacher, whether by email, she'll still have her Schoology email, um, writing your teacher a note, um, but also, you know, you may love your new teacher, um, giving that teacher um, a note because that teacher's probably going to be very nervous and want to do well for you guys too. So letting her know or him know that um, 
you know, you're excited to have that person in your class. Same with friends. I know a lot of the students that I work with, you know, started with messenger kids or being able to, to chat with different people in your class. And even if you're moving from one class to another and you're not with some of your friends in the previous class, being able to keep in touch with those people. Um, there's different ways to be able to do that. And, you know, if any of you ever are having a hard time with this change and you've tried some of these tips, please feel free to, to contact me or Ms. Freeman and we would be happy to talk with you about these changes. But hopefully these tips will help. That video goes over some more tips with you guys. It's a, it's a fun video, has some cool music with it. And then that book um, also talks about getting out of that comfort zone. So hopefully these these resources will help you. Thank you so much for doing this video with me today, Mrs. Gray. I really enjoyed having the opportunity to make this video about change with you. Yes, I had a great time and um, it's always fun to be able to do a lesson together and being able for the whole school K through five to be able to see Ms. Freeman and I together because we do work a lot together. We have siblings that are some siblings have Ms. Freeman, some have me, so it's always good for us to be able to do a lesson together. So thank you, Ms. Freeman, for having me. Bye, boys and girls. Have a great week. Enjoy the videos, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.